How do you really invest in gold and silver? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I've been looking forward to doing this video for, I'd say a month now. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it may actually extend into two videos, so make sure you hit the subscribe button, the bell icon too. Make sure you do that because you're not gonna wanna miss any other parts in this video series. So if you followed my channel <laughs> for any length of time, you've heard me say, many things about gold and silver and a lot of other stuff like the stock market. First of all, what we're in is like a bizarre world of irrational market valuations. It, the markets aren't based on fundamentals like, you know, PE ratios or earnings per share outstanding. Nope. Mm -mm. In fact, while the S&P 500 may have been up, you know, 30% last year, corporate earnings were down. Irrational behavior is driving this market, folks, not, not sound investment approaches. The markets are way, way overpriced. And I've told you why that is too. Well, at least why I believe it, it is. And that's because of crazy cheap money from the Fed and unprecedented corporate stock buybacks. I've, I've argued that we're headed for a recession, which... Yankee believes is going to spawn a crisis, and eventually, I think it will result in a U.S. dollar collapse. I think it's going to be a stock and bond train wreck for years. Think Japan. The okay. Fed is powerless to stop this recession this time, and they're going to try. They're going to try just like they try all the times, okay? They, they're going to uh, succumb to political pressure. They're going to uh, print money. They're going to explode their balance sheet. They're going to drop rates to zero. Shoot, they may even consider going negative on interest rates. Simply put, when faced with a the collapse, they're going to sacrifice the U.S. dollar in an attempt to save the markets. But, but it won't work this time, okay? So what should we do? I've encouraged people to get out of consumer debt, okay? Increase your savings. Remove as much of this stuff, cash, currency, from the public bank. You know, be the bank with a stash of cash at home. And stack silver and gold, all right? When it comes to your 401k or, or similar retirement accounts, I've advocated for greatly reducing your exposure to U.S. dollar denominated assets. I've warned you against the risks of gold and silver ETFs. Remember, like, like GLD, SLV, SLVR. It's risky, folks. <laughs> and I've encouraged you to take real profits now. Don't just get greedy with your paper profits. I've also told you not to automatically roll your 401k over to a new employer's plan like they want you to do. You've got some time if you're changing jobs. And if you do, strongly consider a self-directed IRA. It gives you a lot more flexibility with your retirement accounts like private mortgage lending or real estate or a whole bunch of other options. I've shown you charts and graphs. I've explained why stacking and prepping is important. And as a result, I've been called an alarmist, a, a, a silver pumper, a gold pumper, a liberal, which just kills me, <laughs> anti-Trump, which I'm not, anti-American. Are you kidding me? You name it. Whatever, it's okay. Because I really appreciate the people in our community. You guys are awesome. But there's one question I get asked regularly, and it kind of has haunted me for a while. And it is this What do I do with my retirement? <laughs> and specifically, Yankee, how can I position myself for this coming financial earthquake, you know, that you talk about with my 401k or some other retirement account? Wow, that is a great question, okay? So I'm going to start talking about 
the 401k. Now, this isn't limited to retirement accounts like the 401k. If you've got, I don't know, an inheritance or you got another big chunk of investment funds that you want to invest, the question is still valid, okay? Maybe outside your home, a lot of people's wealth is tied up in their retirement, their 401k. And I'm really going to do my best to give you some new options on what to do with those funds. Now, there are some options right out of the gate you can do. You could you could uh, move some of the investment into you know cash, like a like a money market, <laughs> and hope that a future crisis doesn't you know break the buck like it did for the first time in history on September 16, 2008. Um, you, you could move some of it into foreign stocks or emerging markets or what a whole host of other non-U.S. dollar-denominated equities. Okay, so you got to be careful there, though, guys. <laughs> the exchange rate, it can be really challenging and tricky. So, yeah. And also, there's there's a chance that this, you know, economic contagion is going to just spread through global markets. So, be careful what you do with your 401k. In fact, I had two individuals ask me uh, via email if they should just cash out of their 401k early, pay the penalty, all the interest, <laughs> buy physical gold and silver. <laughs> really? <sighs> Ooh, no, I told them, uh-uh, don't do that. You could pay really, really dearly with that move. I mean, you... <laughs> That's a lot of, of money you're going to have to make up. It could take you a long time to break even, so don't do that. So what else is there to do? Well, if you are young with a long time horizon, say, you know, nice early 20s, say, or if you have a high risk tolerance, or maybe you just want to increase your hedge against the dollar, and you know market downside risk. Let me suggest mining stocks. Okay, full disclosure, I'm not a financial analyst. This is just for fun. Please consult your 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 expert your professional. Don't just simply jump into gold and silver mining stocks like I'm about to talk about because Yankee said to do it. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> do your own research, okay? These are these are higher risk moves I'm going to talk about and you should really really research them carefully. I mean, I've been doing that, so you need to do it too. I've I've researched uh, the mining sector. I've talked personally with some uh, investors in the area. I had w one great guy in our stacking community uh, reach out and and talk with me. His, uh, his his channel name is SoCal Silver. I'll put his uh, link in the uh, uh, description below. He's not a big content creator, or at least not recently. But he and I had a really cool conversation about his approach and his strategy with you know investing in mining stocks. And I'm going to share those with you. So if your retirement account or your 401k allows you to invest in mining stocks and mining stock ETFs, listen up, all right? The advantage of mining stocks is that you, you can avoid some of the problems with investing in this stuff, okay? And I have said many, many times, I do not, do not invest in physical precious metals. Uh, yeah, that's right. If you're new to my channel, you might go, well, wh what? <laughs> what are you talking about, Yankee? <laughs> no, I don't invest in this stuff, all right? Silver and gold do not yield income. They don't produce cash flows. They sit there and look beautiful, <laughs> okay? And, and while flipping or playing the ratio may work for some people, you know, you might have some really higher premium stuff and you're saying, yeah, yeah, I can flip this stuff. No problem. I can make some money. Okay, fine. <laughs> Maybe you can. But in my humble opinion, this stuff sucks as a traditional investment. Don't get me wrong. It is an absolute must have for inflation insurance. 
It's a great preservation of existing wealth, but it it ain't going to make you rich, folks. All right? You know, even, even if silver and gold shoot the moon, its real value against inflation, not its nominal value, its real value, it, it's not going to let you travel the world. It's not going to let you buy a yacht, okay? It, it might let you fill your gas tank. It might let you, you know, feed your family. But this stuff is not a way to get rich quick. I, I say that, and I'm pretty adamant about it because I've read so many articles and, and, and you know, things online where people have become so discouraged. They thought they could get into precious metals. They heard somebody pump it, and, oh, boy, in a few years, I'm going to be rich. Uh-uh. But while, while that's the case, what mining stocks offer is a way to produce cash flows. You could potentially even get dividends along the way. It provides a way to really invest in gold and silver. And it's consistent with our core belief about precious metals, namely that, that this stuff has intrinsic value. It's, 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 it's what's going to help us see us through the next crisis. I'm about to invest $10,000 in some mining stocks. Now, for some of you watching this video, that's a lot of money, $10,000. For some of you, that's a drop in the bucket. It's almost laughable when it comes to investing. Fine, <laughs> whatever. I picked $10,000 because, you know, I think it, it, it it's an easy way to show return on investment. It's like, you know, enough without maybe too much, right? Now, I plan on updating you on my progress with this investment over the next few months and years, all right? I'll include it in, in some way. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'll let you know how well I do. And and $10,000 is, I think, a really good starting point. I'm no expert, so I don't want to bet the farm on this, okay? And neither should you, all right? I'll, I'll probably increase my exposure privately over time. But you know, for my channel, Yankee Stack, and I'll, I'll publicly track the performance of just the $10,000. So why am I excited about this precious metals mining stocks? Well, first, I'm a contrarian investor. I try to buy what everyone else is running away from. I'm sure a lot of you out there are very similar to Yankee. You, you try to avoid the herd mentality, I know. Uh, as one economist I follow said uh, recently, I want to get into the party early <laughs> when the music is starting up and not at the end when the police are showing up. <laughs> okay, that's a contrarian investor. And second, I think mining stocks are incredibly cheap. Check this chart out. Wow. You can see, historically speaking, it's cheap. Third, I believe, like many of you, that gold and silver are going to rise dramatically over the next five years. And I want to be poised to take advantage of that from an investment standpoint, not just as a hedge to counteract inflation. I care about that a lot too. But I want to invest a very small portion of my overall portfolio in an area that I think could pay off in a massive way. I mean, potentially 10 times what I put into it, okay? A 10-bagger, if you will. <laughs> and that's my rationale, all right? But, but, but do remember this too. Yankee is 53. I'm an old guy, right? I'm conservative. I'm a prepper. You know, most of my investment money is outside the stock and bond markets. Right now, gone, out. I actually safely invest a large portion of my wealth in real estate and promissory notes backed by real estate as collateral. These investments in property, you know, with both cash and retirement monies bring in about 8% a year. 8% APY, that's pretty darn good for a conservative collateralized investment. And I also preserve my wealth with physical gold and silver, like I mentioned. So my risk tolerance is rather low. 
but it's not non-existent, okay? And my goal with this precious metals mining stocks are to take part in a more speculative opportunity without absolutely going nuts. So let's explore this a little more together. First of all, not all mining stocks are created equal. There are three main groups or classifications or whatever you want to call them that you need to be aware of when it comes to mining stocks. The first is majors. The second are juniors. And the third are what's called royalty or streaming companies. All right. So we're going to break this down. We're going to first talk about majors. Now these these are the blue chips of mining stocks, okay? And so for like when it comes to uh, regular stocks, we're talking, you know, Microsoft or, or Johnson & Johnson, uh, Lowe's, uh, Walmart, uh, ExxonMobil, okay? These are well-established large mining operations that have a really good history of tapping highly productive mines, okay? They're well-capitalized companies. They got, you know, world-spanning operations. They have a, a nice, slow, and steady cash flow. Two of the biggest names in this arena are Barrick Gold, New York Stock Exchange ticker G-O-L-D, <laughs> Gold, <laughs> I love that symbol, <laughs> and uh, Newmont Gold Corp. New York Stock Exchange ticker NEM. So Barrick Gold, Newmark, Newmont, sorry, uh, Gold Corp. Now Barrick, they're the largest gold producer in the world. They got five out of the top 10 mines, okay? Barrick has a very low, what's called an uh, all-in sustaining costs or AISC. And I'm gonna talk about this more, so don't 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 panic, okay? AISC, all in sustaining costs, very low, okay? And and that low uh, cost uh, enables them to survive periods of low gold prices. So they're they're a hardy company, all right. Now, on the other hand, they've they do have a lot of debt, okay, and they're working hard to reduce that. And their management is, you know, well, somewhat in flux. But anyways, let let's just say. That from a majors standpoint, you know, the blue chips of uh, mining stocks, I'm considering investing some of my money in Barrick. All right. So that was majors. Second one, juniors. All right. Now, these mining companies are the most speculative mining companies to own. All right. They're, they're, they're small. Uh, they're highly leveraged. Um, it's, they're looking for a golden needle in a haystack, these companies are, and they have a lot of competition, all right? Um, and, you know, a lot of them are, are just, you know, so small they get bought up in, in mergers and acquisitions. So, so, so think of them like a, like a, like a over-the-counter stock or a penny stock, all right? Really, really volatile. SoCal Silver, he gave me a huge list of juniors that he invests in. I went through them. Some of them are pretty interesting. I'll include uh, some of them in the description below. I mean, these are really exciting stocks to get into. You can make a pile of money in a relatively short period of time. But you better know what you're doing with juniors, all right? Most of them are like way overcapitalized. In fact, I heard on a recent YouTube video that of the 2,000 or so uh, junior mining companies worldwide, probably only... 500 of them are actually viable, all right? The other three quarters can make you feel like you're dealing with a slick salesman holding a glossy brochure, ready to, you know, skip town once he gets your cash. So <laughs> it can be really sleazy, right? So if anybody out there has some junior mining stocks that you feel are really hot right now, you know, and you know the ticker symbol, put them in the comments below. I, I'd be curious to check them out. But just, I'll tell you right now, I'm staying clear of juniors, okay? The risk just too high for me. And my investment time horizon is, is too small. <laughs> All right. So, it, and, and remember this, whether we're talking about juniors or majors, with mining stock, the name of the game is leverage. Okay. Leverage. If you're into buying, you know, stocks on margin, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? leverage. The payoff, <laughs> the payoff can be massive, you know, but with all leveraged investing, the reverse is just as true. A mining company can go 
bankrupt and you're going to lose your shirt. In fact, I was checking out online these uh, these mining stock certificates. Check this out. National Gold and Silver Mining, uh, Rampart City Gold Mines Company, and Econa Extension Gold Mining Company, Golden Horseshoe Mining Company. Look at that. <laughs> Beaver Dam Gold Mining Company. Guys, <laughs> these are all gone. These mining companies, they're kaput. And, and that's what can happen, especially with the small ones, right? They can go completely belly up because they really do leverage a lot. So with investing in a, a major or junior mining company, one must constantly pay attention to four critical factors. The first is all-in sustaining costs, or AISC. I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about uh, Barrick um, Gold, right? One of the majors. All-in sustaining costs. It's the costs uh, incurred in the complete mining life cycle from exploration all the way to a mine's uh, closure. Okay, and in practical terms, it's the point where gold or silver prices can drop before a mining company can't make any more profit. All right, so that's what an all in sustaining cost is, and it's very important. It's one of the critical factors. The other one is debt how much you know debt a mining company has, how much it's leveraged. Very important. The third uh, critical aspect is. The size of their reserves, okay? The bigger their reserves are, the safer they are, all right? And the fourth is their management skill, okay? I, You know, I, I probably should have put management at the very top of the list, okay? First, just like the three most important things with real estate is location, location, location. <laughs> with mining stocks, it's management, 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 okay? You want frugal disciplined management, okay, who knows how to find safe, quality properties to mine. They sometimes call those, uh, I think, flagship properties, okay? So that's what you're looking for, those four criteria. And when you find those four, right, and the, and the price of gold starts going up, the payoff is amazing. All right, so I, I'm running really long here, and so I'm going to stop, make this part one, I'm going to come out with part two in a couple days. I'll show you, okay, how majors and juniors can actually make you two times, three times, five times your investment or even more, okay? And I'll also tell you where most of my $10,000 is going. You're not going to want to miss it. So thank you so much for watching this part one of how to really invest in gold and silver. And I hope your day is a okay. 